Hello everybody, Battleforge Games here, and welcome to The Secrets of the Foundation, a new series or just single video that I'm going to be doing. All thanks to help from the Vain Brain, the one of the developers of SCP Containment Reach, who has very, very kindly sent me some screenshots and some videos of the game during its development process from version 1.1 till now. Uh, some of them will be uh, from version 1.2, some will be just before 1.3, and some of them will be in between those stages, so around there. Before moving on, I'd like to give the Vainbrain himself an actual shout out for, well, like I said previously, supplying the images and footage. He didn't have to do it, he went out of his own way to go and send them to me. Um, got into contact with me first, said, Would you like some of this? Do you like my video on it? I was like, Yep, sure. So, this is pretty exclusive content, which, um, it's only been sent to me, I believe. He might have done it with someone else, I'm not sure, but as far as my knowledge goes. So, yes, pop over to his channel. He's done some, he does like sneak peeks of versions before they come out, like the Ninetale Fox mod, which will be coming, version 2 will be coming out soon. You can go and check that out, and he does some like music stuff as well. So, if you want, if you like that sort of thing and you want to know a little bit more about the game before it comes out, go over to his channel and just check it out. You know, nothing wrong with that. Gives the guy a bit of support, and yeah, all is good. Another quick update as well, the Q&A that I was recording as well should be out very, very soon. So if you're looking forward to that, don't worry, it'll be out soon. Just getting this video out of the way first, which is taking absolutely forever. <laughs> getting all the footage and stuff, compiling it together. I'm doing the script now. So, yeah, I'll be out eventually. So, now that's all out of the way, we'll begin with the actual video. Okay, starting off with the starting walkway area in the beginning of the game. This is like when you first start the game if you enable the intro sequence. When you walk across the carriageway, you can look across at the opposite corridor of the facility, and you can normally see like some guards in a class D walking in the opposite direction. Um, this screenshot was taken before version 1.3 had came out, so I can't remember what the exact date of the game coming out was, but this is the screenshot of the version before that. There's not too much of a difference between the current one and this screenshot. Except that there was meant to be a scene where a guard would go into the Class D cell and forcefully remove him because probably the Class D was being reluctant to come out of his cell because he probably knew what was going to happen to him. You can then assume that the Class D was then either like carried away on the guard's shoulder or escorted away by gunpoint to a testing chamber to be experimented on. But again, this is just speculation and theories, which, you know, a cool idea if it was implemented. The guards or the player would then comment about what's going on the other side, maybe a funny line or something in context to what was going on on the opposite side, as the guard normally says something quite funny during the walk to the test chambers. Moving on a little bit now, we're at May the 1st, 2016, with a screenshot showing a very basic placeholder for the security feed between the entrance zone and the heavy containment zone. The differences between the current version of SCP Consumer Breach and this one is very obvious judging by how simple the placeholder actually is compared to what it looks like now, but you can see what they were just putting it there whilst they were working on the proper texture for it, which works fine, that's what game development does, you just put a placeholder whilst you work on the proper one just so you can see if it works. So just in case it doesn't work, you can work on fixing it before you put all the time into making your proper texture for it. I'm assuming from this screenshot you can probably work out that the light containment zone to the heavy containment zone also is very similar or non-existent, we don't know because no, we've only got this screenshot. Yet again there's not really much to talk about this one, it's just showing a post version 1.3 screenshot of a security feed of why you can't go from the entrance zone to the heavy containment zone. So anyway, moving on to the next screenshot which will be a bow. SCP-1499, well the monster of SCP-1499, and you can see, um, well, it doesn't look anything like the current version at all, he's definitely a bit fatter, and he has much bigger eyeballs, this one's a little bit more interesting than the other screenshots, and this screenshot was taken on the 10th of April 2016. It also gives you a little bit of a view on how they make the models in the game, you can see that it's obviously made in some sort of 3D creation tool. Again, not sure what tool this is, I think it's probably only developer related, so I know that they work with the Blitz 3D engine, which they used to work with the Blitz Max, which was, compared to what it is now, completely obsolete and terrible, even though Blitz 3D itself is actually outdated, and I'm surprised they actually even get as much out of it as possible. I remember reading up saying that they have to force the engine over 150% what it's meant to be actually working at, which is crazy, that's why it's so unstable and not bug free because they're working it so hard. 
but yeah, back on track with the actual screenshot, you can see that the monster itself is much plumper than previous, than the current version, sorry. The eyes are humongous and much more predominant than the current ones they have on it now. The model itself doesn't have as much detail as the current version, but obviously being version post version 1.3, they're obviously not going to have as much detail added to the model they have now, because obviously it's not finished. So, moving on from this screenshot to another fairly interesting one, which is going to be about the guards from the beginning of the game. So, not much of a difference in the actual model, but if you look very carefully, and by very carefully I mean just looking at it generally, you can see that the visor is transparent. Now, you may notice that the current version does not have transparent visors, unless I'm like really, really, really wrong here, and I haven't noticed, but I'm pretty sure they don't have transparent visors in the current version. So this is either a scrapped feature, or they haven't added it just yet. But this screenshot was taken on July 2nd, so one day after my birthday. Same time, same year as the other screenshot. So I'm a little bit confused on why they haven't added the transparent visor. Unless I'm literally being really stupid and I haven't noticed that they have transparent visors. So I won't be talking out my arse here. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that they have um, opaque visors, which is why you can't see the face. But the, the face texture does exist in-game. If you have the files, you can see it. The next screenshot we have here is of the CCTV room. Now in the screenshot, if you look very carefully at the middle monitor, you can see a figure standing in the doorway to the entrance of the CCTV room. Now zooming in closely doesn't really show much, it just kind of the image is too pixelated to actually see what it is. It's more of an unknown figure, because we don't know who it is. It looks a little bit like a scientist, but again, you can't work it out and there's no way of finding out who it is or what it is because there's no file or code for it to spawn it there. So again, this screenshot was taken on the post version 1.3 and on the 19th of June. So again, this is getting closer and closer to the game's final release, so whatever this was, this unknown figure was, they removed it just before they finished the version and before they released it. So again, we will never work out what it is because it's not in the game anymore, unfortunately. Okay, rather excitingly now, we have a few videos to watch of the game before it was finished. Uh, these videos are quite short, but they show you quite a lot of how rooms were are made and then developed even further to make them into the final rooms that we have now. A lot of them are based from templates from other rooms and then they're built upon and changed till the final version. So the first video I'm going to show you is of a very early SCP-205 room. So the, the lights, the lamps, whatever they're called, I can't remember, the, the floodlights almost. Um, yeah, I'll let it play out and then after I'll talk about what's in the video and my ideas and what they were trying to achieve when they were making the room. Now you may have noticed very early on in that video it says that the room is SCP-1123's room. This is not the case, it is a very early version of 205's room. Uh, the reason that it says it's SCP-1123's room is because they built 205's room off of that room's model. So they changed it, so they had that room and they changed it to what it is now. This is mainly just to save time and you know it allows them to have a little bit of a template to work with as templates make pretty much everything you work on easier. A couple more seconds into the video you can see that there's a little bit of an extension to the room and a window that's been added to the room. Now this window could actually have been from 1123's wall little containment room that he's in compared to the entire room. Or this is a, the beginning of like a new corridor like entranceway to the new room. The extended bit is obviously where they're going to be building up on top of to make the room even bigger, which the next video will show you where that is. But you can see this, this is a very, very early version of this room. As you can see, there's a lot not done, and it looks very, very similar to 1123's room. And as the camera zooms out, you can see the entire corridor on how far the room has been built up to. Interesting fact about the first clip and the second clip that I'm going to be showing you now. These were made while version 1.2 were being made as well. So, these videos are even older than the screenshots. Okay, again with the second clip, I'll shut up and you can watch the little clip and then I'll talk about it after.
Okay, so straight away you can immediately tell this room is a lot further in its development because it doesn't look exactly like 1123's room anymore. You can see that the corridors have changed, the doorways have changed, and it's looking a little bit more like a finished version. You can see a little bit further on that the wall has basically little, tiny little strips taken out of them. This is where they're going to be putting a window in to allow the light to shine through onto the canvas, which you can see behind, which looks like a wall, which they'll probably retexture later on, guessing on how it's going to be done. You can also see that there's a little bump in the middle where it's going to be like a control panel, or like where a scientist will sit. This is obviously like a theory, I'm not sure what would be there, but again, this is just my ideas on what they were going for. Uh, you can see a little bit later on that they fly inside of the room and you can see that the canvas where the monsters were displayed on the wall is, it looks like a normal wall which is obviously retextured later on and the lamps would be added as a different model into the game itself a little bit later on as well, which is why you can't see them. Moving on from the video clips, we're moving on to a couple of last screenshots from the CCTV room. This, these two screenshots are again early version 1.3 and the screenshot after is after version 1.3 was released or just after, you know, around there. Um, so, first screenshot here shows the same room. There's not a huge amount of differences, but if you look carefully at the control panel on the wall and the back wall to the right, you can see that there are no switches. This is because, in another screenshot I'll put up now, you can see that the switches were moved to the left side and not on the back wall you can see there. The reason they moved them over that side is unknown, but the reason they moved it back to the side that it's on currently in-game now is because there is actually a window which you can look out at and see SCP-049 emerge from that room. Uh, the only other difference I can notice is that the power box to the left there is slightly smaller. That, again, might just be the angle of the photo because they're not identical. Apart from that, there aren't too many more differences. Maybe the lighting's slightly different and the monitors are a different position, but again, the positioning is probably the fault here. Okay, so that's all of the screenshots and videos I have of the development of version 1.3 and version 1.2 for that matter. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, I can't thank the vain brain enough for sending me the screenshots and the videos. This video has been a lot of fun to gather, make and theorise on. I'd like to talk a little bit more about theories of game development in future videos. So this is probably going to be episode one. Later episodes I'll go in about what things could be added later on or looking at other screenshots and going, I wonder what the game developers were thinking about when they were doing this. But again, this video is just basically showing off how SCP Containment Breach is made, developed and then released. So this one shows how they work on new rooms, their ideas before they release them, and like placeholders and things. Little th interesting things that you normally wouldn't see. So, I hope you guys have enjoyed. I've enjoyed making it. Again, check out the Vein Brace channel. His link will be in the description. And yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.